has to happen when you're playing a top eight bracket. That's why it's so tough to win, say, a PTQ top eight sometimes because, you know, you hear stories of people say, oh, I, I haven't won a PTQ, but I've top eighted 10 of them. Well, that's right. because the cream rises <laughs> yeah. to the top. That person was I, you. I, I, I have a certain, I can tell you some stories about <laughs> not winning PTQ top eights. The worst is, uh, for those of you, those of you baby PTQ at home, Okay. Do it for those of you who um, PTQ at home. The worst is when you when you lose your eighth PTQ top eight without winning one, because then you realize that you're doing worse than a die roll, <laughs> and then you're like, oh man, I'm I'm below average. <laughs> it's been confirmed. <laughs> um, do realize, uh, Angel Serenity actually can't. Yeah, thank you. And on Twitter, we were helped out there. Angel Serenity cannot exile planeswalkers. So, Angel Serenity there actually then not a very good reanimation. It's kind of just a five five. Right, right. I'm now, what he can do, he can. RFG the Thrag Tusks in his graveyard, he can RFG the other creatures in his graveyard so he can get them back when the angel dies, which is probably what he'll want to do with it. Yeah, he'll use it to rebuy, I mean he can use it to, frankly, to rebuy more angels. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's not like Restoration Angel, it doesn't have a non-angel clause on it. So that's going to be Chris Weidinger's best weapon, just looping angels, hopefully getting back Thrag Tusks every time. Things like that. Right. Angel of Serenity, really a neat card that way. It's uh, very resilient to removal. Uh, remember that we also have two Gristle Brands that Christopher Widinger can find. Um, that should be fairly relevant. Yep, it's just a question of whether he can find them. Now, Chris Widinger might actually leave Bonfire of the Damned in, in this, or might side in Bonfire of the Damned in this matchup uh, because it deals with him treat the angels. There's right. a lot of in such a in such a controlish sort of matchup, there's some really unique sideboarding that goes on. Yeah, and there's no question that Chris Weidinger will get up to enough lands with the mulches in his deck um, to cast that bonfire to kill the angels. And it's great to not just be dead to your opponent's big spell. Because as it is in the main deck, if Todd Anderson miracles and entreat the angels for, say, five four fours, Chris Weidinger has almost no shot. He'll have to chump block with Lingering Souls tokens while eating an Angel turn with Angel Serenity. It's just really unlikely uh, with all the tools that Todd would have in reserve. So it looks like Chris Weidinger keeping his seven card hand. Again, he is on the play. Todd Anderson right now is on six cards. He hopes to keep his six. Players joking around. Looks like they're having a pretty laid back match so far. Both players happy to have made it this far. Yep, Todd Anderson appears to be on, he kept a six card hand. Right, so both both players with a land into play tapped. Clifftop retreat for Chris Weidinger, uh, Glacial Fortress for Todd Anderson. And Faithless Looting on turn two, Chris will make, he now has all, he has three of his colors, he is still missing black. Now. What do we call these lands that come into play tapped unless you have a basic? Uh, you normally call them M10, the M10 duels. I understand that the Innistrad ones are not from M10, but I still call them M10 duels. Okay, there, there has to be a better name. Oh, okay, from our director, Buddy Lands. That's, I've uh, never heard that. I've never heard that, but I like it. <laughs> I, Let's make this a thing. That, oh, okay. <laughs> so, land needs its buddy. All right, a mulch will hit Finding Temple Garden, getting Grizzly Salvage, Golgari Charm, and Centaur Healer in the yard. He did discard off... Um, he discarded Rolling Temblor and Unburial Rites off his first Faithless Looting, which is kind of, to me, gets rid of the card disadvantage of Faithless Looting because he was able to discard a Rolling Temblor. <laughs> <laughs> kind um, of a dead card anyway. Three cards now for Todd Anderson. He has Zorius Charmed on end step. He has a Snapcaster in hand. You have another Looting and a Thrag Toss in Widinger's hand. Widinger will flashback, looks like he's going to flashback a Faithless Looting. Or cast Lingering Souls. Okay, so he's going to get some pressure on the board. Wants yep. to. I hope he has his land drop. I don't. I'm. I'm worried here that. Okay, no, he does. Root Brown Crag into play. Tap. No, not not on tap to the Temple Garden, and he's in a Faithless Looting. Wow. Now you know, right there, he he definitely should have Faithless Looting first if that was his plan, just in case he found a better play than Lingering Souls, yeah, or in case he wanted to discard. He's going to discard Souls. Mulch. It's an interesting play. I almost would have wanted to discard Land before I would discard Mulch. Hmm. Yeah, Mulch on average will get one, one and a half, yeah. somewhere in there. Perhaps he's worried about tempo here, but if so, I, I think that's a little misplaced. Mulch is, is always Four. the last spell you want to play, though. 
Fourth Almost land for Ty Anderson. He has Syncopate, Snapcaster Mage, and Supreme Verdict in his hand. He does not make a Jace. Important to know. So the Lingering Soul swings in. First Blood for Chris Whitinger, dropping Todd Anderson down to 18. Fifth land and a pair of Thrag Tusks in Whitinger's hand. And you have to think he'll just tap out for it. Thrag Tusk will get syn quickly syncopated. Michael O'Connor on Twitter. He calls them check lands because they check when they come into play. That's not bad. Follower lands, okay. I still like buddy lands, though. M10 duels. Oh, is it? All right, Tamio the Moon Sage <laughs> comes down for Todd Anderson. And Todd's going to check out the mana base, see what he wants to lock down. Here's one of those Planeswalkers, really. <laughs> uh, the lands are all pretty interchangeable. He's going to go with Rootbound Crag. Yeah, and Christopher Weidinger has to be worried about that Planeswalker. Sure. It's going to be very hard for him to kill a Planeswalker. Looks like Chris did not hit his sixth land, therefore Oon will never be unable to cast the Craig Tusk. Yeah, and that's a crucial six land drop for him there. He has to be able to build up to his angels, keep pressure up with a creature. Two spirit tokens knock Tamiyo down to three. And Todd Anderson with three sweepers in his hand right now. Supreme right. Verdict, Terminus, Terminus to go with Snapcaster Mage. So yeah. very strong draw by him. Whitinger will flash back a Faithless Seeding. Drying land. Ooh, and Gristlebrand. And Gristlebrand. He will discard the Gristlebrand. It's not a cast, not castable. No, he would have to have um, a lot of a lot of specific lands in play to cast he, that one. He does have, he has six black lands. Uh, okay, no, like, ten black lands in the deck. So it's possible, but he has zero in play, which means it's not very possible. Right. So Grizzly Salvage and Gristlebrand to the bin. You'll have to rely on Burial Rites in that. Here's going to start coming that, that parade of sweepers. Um, Tamiyo will really function as an LD spell for most of this game. If, if Todd really wants, Tamiyo could draw two here, and then he could Wrath, which actually isn't the worst. Yeah, uh, it's a little vulnerable to things like, a, well, he doesn't actually have Bonfire in the minute. That may actually be a safe play. He's going to keep a Spirit Token tapped. Try to... Tamio can he's gonna try to make Chris Widinger commit harder to the board before he rats. Right. I think he's gonna let Tamio get down pretty low just to try and snag uh, some more spells from Chris Widinger. I think I think Todd knows that this game's probably gonna go long and is playing for the long. Todd game has now. three sweepers and a counter spell in his hand right now. Right. The counter spell being Snapcaster Mage. Interesting to note though, no red mana, so Todd can't activate that desolate lighthouse. Can't cast any pillars he might. But this draw. game's going exactly how Todd wants it to. Uh, the token will swing, you know, so Todd's basically just going to, they're going to ship turns back and forth. Todd is more than fine with it. As soon as he draws a red source, he'll be great with it. Right, here we go, though, on Burial Rites on the Gristlebrand. Syncopate can only counter for two mana, won't do it, and Gristlebrand that, is in play. That's huge. That's absolutely huge. Chris, Chris Weidinger is going to be able to draw seven. Yeah. Fourteen if he wants to. I'd probably stop at 7. Uh, yeah, Maybe. I'd, pr I'd probably, check, probably check to see what the 7 are. The nice is that Todd has a Terminus, so this Gristle brand will not get continue to get reanimated. Right. So Todd Anderson draws Jace Architect of Thought here, and if he has another land, which he doesn't... He could have uh, Jace... Yeah, yeah Tamiyo will draws draw two. two. He would love to hit a land Another here. Terminus, and, uh, and he has his red land. There it is. Terminus. So terminus for 6. That'll put them on the bottom. Chris Wanger drops to 13 to take a new hand. Gotta love Gristlebrand. Card's very strong. Four, five, six, seven. One was a Gristlebrand, one was a Rolling Templar, so really weak. Chris Weidinger might have to draw seven more. That hand one is... An un, one's an unbar it was in Burial Rites, actually. Oh, it was? Yep. Okay. That's not so bad, then. Gristlebrand goes on the bottom. Steam bends into play tapped. Todd will pass the turn. So despite having seven cards, Chris not having doesn't have that much action right now. No, and you know, that's kind of a problem with the Fright Stack. A lot of its cards don't really do much. A lot of them don't affect the board right away. Chris drops to 11. One of the things which I love, which I find frustrating about it is that it really does play like a type 4 deck. No matter how many cards you have, you're really only casting one spell this turn. Right, one relevant thing. Going to Dreadbore the Tamio. I like that play. Yep, great play. Now he can play a Thrag Tusk too which puts a little crimp on Todd Anderson's plans. 
and that's exactly what he's going to do. Christopher Widinger going back up to 16. Todd with three more sweepers, two of them, remember, the thing about Thrag Tusk is he kind of has that worm coil engine effect where he's very resilient to sweepers. He's sticky. Hard to yes. deal with. Hollowed Fountain for Todd. So Todd has the option here to play, well, that doesn't really work. I was going to say Supreme Verdict Jace, except that the Thrag Tusk makes that uniquely difficult right. to deal with. It looks like that's going to do it anyway. Do. Verdict Jace. So Widinger will get a 3-3. Three, three. Jace will weak stone. So Jay, he, it still gives him the outlet to, to secure a Jace, which I think makes it the correct play. Right. Def definitely is. Next turn, Todd will be able to draw a card with Jace's ability. Turn again. Wipe the board. Be in a pretty good position again. His hand Snapcaster Mage and double Terminus. He's gonna really need. He really needs this Jace to survive. Facial sleeping. Chris Widinger. He's drawn another Gristlebrand, and he can reanimate it. Wow. It's just huge. Yeah, and Chris Chris really just uh, doesn't have much going on here. I, you know, I, I might have actually... I don't know. I was going to say I might have kept the Gristlebrand. To cast? Well, that might be a little ambitious, yeah. though. Only two black sources right now. The question is, would you rather cast Gristlebrand and Bear White's a Gristlebrand or a Thrag Tusk at this point? It's pretty or maybe close. just cast another Thrag Tusk. Or he's going to cast Unveil Rights on Gristlebrand. I'm not sure. And that sounds very weird. I'm not sure I like that more than Thrag Tusk. As, as odd as that sounds. With so many sweepers in Todd Anderson's deck, Chris has to has to want to kill that Jace as soon as possible. Right. I think, uh, yeah. As soon as I think I would have preferred to just cast Thrag Tusk. Yeah. And he'll finish off with a Mulch. What's that? One, two... And there's an angel. He gets three lands, angel in the yard. Chris has to make sure he doesn't mill himself here. Right, it's actually a pretty real worry with all the mulching and grizzly salvaging and gristlebrand drawing seven. It is a worry going long. And it's going to be easily Jace will mini factor friction. And I think this is the reason is that Jace can't, if, if, if the gristlebrand were a thrag tusk, Jace couldn't mini factor friction here. Right. And I think that, that's the biggest difference. Yeah, they would just have to keep plussing one, which really doesn't do a heck of a lot. Infinite Thrag Tusks is actually a scarier threat than Infinite Crystal Brands. Oh yeah, definitely. Because all those cards that he can draw, they don't really do anything. Like you said, I tested Crystal Brand in my Freed stack, and it was like, whenever I got the Crystal Brand and they killed it immediately, the 7 life was almost always too big of a liability. Right. I mean, in, in, in classic freaks, you then instead, and he's not going to draw seven, which now both crystal brands on the bottom of the deck. None. They won't really be showing up again. Wow. Um, he played Crater Hoof Behemoth in classic freaks, right? That was the, the reanimation target of choice. Uh, By the end of the season, yes, it was. Yes, it was. And and that was a great addition. That took people a while to find too. Carl, that deck playing a bunch of mana creatures, obviously making the card much better. Right. Would not be good in Chris's deck. Yeah, Birds of Paradise now finally rotated out of out of the format. Wow. It's been a while. Yeah. I mean, a Dreadboard draw for Chris Whitinger. Wow. Chris, Chris Whitinger definitely in the driver's seat now. Yeah, the Dreadboard being fantastic. He only play, plays two Dreadboard. But we're going to see, I think we're going to see Dreadboard Lingering Soul. Yeah, it looks like it. Chris has no black mana, so he can't flash that back. Might oh, more. hard cast Thrag, thrag Tusk. Definitely better. Here's for back up to 21. Yep, and... You know, the, the bottom of the deck, the bottom of Chris's deck is getting really powerful. <laughs> Todd Anderson just really has to draw an Entreat at any point. Right, now he has Desolate Lighthouse, so if he wants to, he can have two chances at Entreat per turn. Yep, and that's that looks like what that pile is right there. Zorius Charm for Todd Anderson. He has one sweeper yeah. left. He I has a snap cast. I really want to put Thrag Tusk back on top of the deck. <laughs> and he's going to pass. I'm going to take one hit to see if he can... Well, yeah, he, he actually, he, he might top of the deck Thrag Tusk. Yeah, you know, the five life, not really that big of a deal. Todd Anderson just has not to stall enough. until he gets that entry. Yeah. Actually, I think, I wonder, I wonder if he's going to do it. That's a, actually a fine play to top of the deck with Thrag Tusk. Looking at his graveyard, signaling signaling that he might have a Snapcaster range. Yep, it's a hard tell to avoid because you can't remember every card in your graveyard. Not easily, anyway. 
Todd goes down to nine. And we have post combat, another land from Chris. And he'll make some souls. Yep, just adding a little more pressure to the board. And it looks like he'll flash it back too, so he's representing lethal here. That's actually a lot of pressure. I'm not sure. That, that's a little more pressure than I may have added. But uh, yeah, no, actually, that, that's right. That's right. He's in it. He wants to draw the terminus. Yeah, I like that play just because he will get a 3 3 from Thrag Tusk. And he has the angel, which can bring back multiple Thrag Tusks. Yep, and he is racing. He's most certainly racing against and trade the angels. Yeah. It looks like he'll finish his turn with a flashback looting. That'll pitch two lands for sure. Fast turn. All right, see if Todd is the top card. We're in top card mode. I think it might be. There's one <laughs> Terminus. He's first using the Azorius Charm. Cycle Azorius Charm instead. I suppose that nope. draws Pillar of Flame. That's something he'll want to loot away. Now that will be the Intrigue. No, that's a land. Now Todd can double Pillar the Thrag Tusk if he wants to. And sure. that's certainly what he'll do if he draws a Jace here. And Boom. there we go. There's the Entreat the Angels. That's a lot of Angels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Angels. 32 power worth of Flyers. Wow. And you know, Chris Weidinger just a little bit too slow this game. Todd Anderson was able to stall long enough to find his Entreat, just like we talked about. If Chris had a bonfire in his hand. Oh, wow. That, he would actually have enough to do it for four. <laughs> oh, wow. I wonder if Chris will side that bonfire in after this game. Centaur Healer does not match up well heal against enough. 32 power worth of flyers. But, you know, he's not out of it. Angel Serenity takes out three of them. Yep. And he has two Angel Serenities. Right. Yep, and then second one takes out three more. Yeah, so Todd Anderson, one of his Entreat the Angels is dealt with. Two left in the deck. Now, Chris doesn't really want to swing Thrag Tusk here. I think it's a mistake to swing Thrag Tusk. Hmm. Because yeah. now his whole team dies to a Terminus. And you have to assume that Todd has a Terminus. Right, and he's pretty much you're, out you're, of gas. Right. I think, yeah, I think, I think it's correct. Would you agree? I think it's correct to hold back Thrag Tusk. Yeah, I think so, too. So I, now, I would have swung with the four, four, four one ones. Probably, though. Yep. So now Todd, really happy, he's going to get to Terminus here. Remember, Todd plays two more Entreats. Yeah, you have to assume Terminus is coming. Yeah. Angel swing, angel block, chorus top throws it off throws the, the table. Terminus everything. So now Chris Whiting, at the bottom of his deck, so good. The bottom of his deck is Gristlebrand, Gristlebrand, Thrag Tusk, Angel Eternity, Angel of Serenity. Wow. He would love a shuffle effect right now, but I don't think he has any. Nope, not a single shuffle effect in the deck. Nope. So he draws that Gristlebrand, it'll be a 7-7. Seven, seven. Yep. Which will be fine. Might be just what he needs. Todd at six life. I mean, he really, I think Bonfire the Dam is really just an excellent card in this matchup. Funnily, funny enough, he would need 14 mana to successfully play Bonfire for six that plays around the syncopate in Todd's hand. Wow, 14 mana, but he might get um, there this well, game. Well, he has 11 right now. It's not that, he's only three off. Wow, draws a Thrag Tusk. It's a very, very strong draw. That'll get the engine going. Todd, though, two pillars. He can deal with it. Two pillars and then Azorius Charm, the 3-3 when it attacks. Yep. But that will take most of Todd's hand to deal with it. Wow, flashback Faithless looting. Absolutely, Chris trying to keep keeping his card advantage going. Yep, he would love to draw into another angel here. Uh, mulch and another angel. There it is. Discarding the mulch and... A land. So keep Centaur Healer, Angel. He does have triple black now, so everything is... is Chris Vines, three quad. quad black. Quad black. He does not appear to have four black in play yet. No, I'm sure he'll get there, though, by the time he gets to the bottom of his deck. Right. Well, I don't know how many lands are in the yard. I, I assume so. But I, I, it's possible he, he doesn't. He has ten sources. Maybe, yeah, so. maybe not. Three in play. At least, uh, well, quite a few at the bottom. So Desolate Lighthouse loots away a pillar. Right, so now Todd can't actually kill the Thrag Tusk outright, which is interesting. Well, he, he can he has to use a Snapcaster to do it. Yeah, interesting that he and didn't pitch the land. And another So 
Todd Anderson, lots of options for that Snapcaster Mage. What's interesting is Todd can't actually deal with all of Chris's things. What Todd is actually just doing is he's just stalling. And he's yeah. going to flashback and treat the angels. Wow. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three angels? So three angels. All right, but Chris Weidinger uh, has another angel. Has drawn angel. another angel of serenity. That's going to be a pretty big deal. Todd Anderson, no I counter think, spell. I feel like Todd Anderson's play there might have been a little more aggressive than it needed to be. Yeah, I, I'm not sure about that. Um, it, had he just held back double pillar, like, and spent some spells on dealing with Thrag Tusk, I think I prefer that to the current to the current line. No, he's, I don't think he's passing. Yeah, see, the thing about Todd Anderson's play that I don't like is that he knows that the bottom of Chris's deck is Gristlebrand, Gristlebrand, Angel, Angel, Thrag Tusk, Thrag Tusk. Or one, two angels, one thrag, one tusk, thrag two tusk. gristle brands. So really, there aren't many threats left. So if he just stalls, he's going to get those retreats before Chris draws the rest of his spells. Correct. And then that snapcaster could here have flashbacked a terminus. Right, instead. right. But he's always one retreat away from just winning. Exactly. He's and he gets through, two chances a turn. Yeah, he's gone through quite a bit of his deck. There's a think twice, too. Yeah, he, well, he's going to need a sweeper now. Yeah, he's at six life. Zorius Charm can stall a little bit. Can stall for a turn, yep. which is like, which is two draws for him. Yeah, and his deck must be getting pretty slim by now, probably about 30 cards. So yep. he has about a 1 in 15 shot of hitting the Entreat with each draw phase. Well, he's going to make the Jace this turn and uh, mini Factor Fiction with the Jace most likely. He doesn't have to Miracle the Entreat anymore at this point. Just right. casting is actually good enough. Right, exactly. He has four Angels on a hard cast. So he's going to pass the turn, not making the Jace. Nope, he wants the full Miracle cost. He's already played Supreme Verdict, so he doesn't have another Supreme Verdict. He's already played... I don't even... If he draws Detention Sphere here, that's going to be pretty awkward for him. Mm, yeah. Which he still has a lot of in his deck. All of them. I don't them, think I he's think. used any of them yet. Oh, and wow. And there we go. <laughs> he must have he known it was coming. Intrigued. Wow. Just really I mean, that, that, timely. That, that, that really did work out. That's. Yeah, I don't think it was the right play, but it worked out really well for him. And now he has to figure out how to block. Okay. And I have to... And Todd Anderson looking at Chris's graveyard, looking at the Lingering Souls, trying to figure out how many unburial rights he has left. How many of all the spells? And it looks like he'll block the Angel of Serenity with at least one. I imagine he'll just block with a lot of angels. Maybe he's playing around the unburial rights in Chris's graveyard. Probably doesn't want to see that angel on burial rights. Wants to keep it on the battlefield. Trying to figure out how many of each spell Chris has left in his deck. Because Chris has gone through so much of it that Tom can actually construct what he has to play around. Well, well Chris doesn't have enough Angel of Serenities left to deal with all these Angel tokens. No, right. Not enough Angel left to deal with these Angels. <laughs> um, <laughs> He'll play Black Thrag Tusk with six and Angel of Serenity with one. All right. He doesn't want to kill the Angel of Serenity. Right. Yep. He doesn't want to see get him burial rights. And Todd Anderson is representing lethal damage with that Pillar of Flame. Chris Weidinger has to find an answer right now. He'll start with the Grizzly Salvage. Right. And on Burial Rights gives him a little life, but that is not good for Chris Weidinger. Epic game one here, 23 minutes so far. Lots of back and forth, multiple entreats, multiple unburials, multiple angels. Chris Weidinger, though, in a rough spot now. Flashing back, looting, wow, finds another angel. I don't think he can cast yeah. it, though. I'm not sure how many lands he has, but I don't think it's enough. One, two, three. He has five lands. Yeah, that's 
and maybe a sixth out of hand. Or is there a seven? Is there another one hiding under there? Yeah, yeah, there might be. There might be a buddy land underneath the cemetery. Yeah, let's count. See how many how many lands does he have there? This Widinger. Wow, discards his seventh land. Okay. Wow. Yeah, there he he did have a seventh land available. It was hiding. I don't think he saw that it was there. That seventh land would have he would have let him cast the angel that's in his hand, and yep. that actually would have stabilized him. But the seventh land is hiding. Yeah, and now this is going to be a blowout because Todd Anderson is going to get to gain 25 life, deal 25 damage, and just really swing this game back in yeah, his favor. Yeah, that Azorius charm would be huge. He's going to play and cast another Centaur Healer. So overloading the board with three threes, going up to a 32, I believe. The bigger problem is the gain 20 spell that Todd has, <laughs> yeah. actually. That one's kind of a big deal. But that said, if Chris Weidinger can deal with these angels, he's in pretty good shape. And there's a detention sphere. Yeah, first one of the game. And he'll sphere the healers. And enter his attack phase. Swinging with four angels. Yep, conveniently half of Chris Weidinger's life total. Right. And wow, no Zorius charm. I think we're gonna let's we'll wait until damage is off to see if that happens. Okay. I, I think that I the twenty damage seems seems good here. And then Jace, Architect of Thought, comes down for Todd. And it looks like he'll plus one. He's in a weak stone here. So he at six, he's he's gonna use the Azorius Charm to put something on top of the deck. As opposed to lifelink, actually, which is strange, but I guess so. That will deny Chris Weidinger one more draw if he somehow can get out of this situation here. All right, so, uh, so Todd to Chris Weidinger now at, yeah, yep, now down to 12 from the swing of five four fours. If Todd just needs to survive for one turn here. But if I like I like the way Chris is playing this, he's an Azorius Charm the Angel, and he like, doesn't know that Widener has the other <laughs> Angel. Okay, he's an Azorius Charm the oh, Token. Interesting. Let's switch up that target a little bit. He'll take five. Or did he chump block? No, he's gonna take no, he taking took, five. Took took the five. Yep. Knows that Chris has no reach in his deck. Has no way to deal one damage to a player or two damage to a player. No, no Geist Flame. Nope. Is it? Oh yeah, four. Sorry, is it two because Jace? Jace is weak stoning. Right, two weak. life. Excellent. Yeah. Good spot by the judge on on judge there. All right, Angel exiles three more angels. And all of a sudden, what a slugfest we have here! <laughs> it's a wild game. And Chris Weidinger has yet more flashback spells. And Todd's What's... last card is Pillar of Flame. All right, flashing back Lingering Souls. Jace can weak stone, so that's not going to matter too much. Yep, more for the chump blockers yep. than anything Todd else. Todd will have five draws to find and entreat the angels. Wow, and there's only one left, but I think he also has one Snapcaster Mage. And you guys, Detention Sphere, that oh, will wow. be excellent for against the two angels. Great right. draw. You know, Chris Widinger wishing he had a Ray of Revelation in his deck right now. Would serve him better than the Rolling Templar here. Jace will factor fiction. Oh, and there's the entreat. Wow, he found it. And a terminus. All right. Well, that looks looks to be almost all over. Yeah. Finds the third entreat. Really, really good for Todd. All of the entreats were in the top. You know, Forty well, I, cards of his deck. In the top so. forty cards. Yeah, at that point, that's not even that. No, you know. it's it's not lucky, but they had to be there. Yep. And Chris Weidinger 
drops down to four. Yep, probably won't be chump blocking here. And now all of the angels are accounted for. Two on the bottom, two in the detention sphere. And on burial rights, cannot target anything relevant here. Okay, pillar token just to be safe. I like to play a lot. And then making two more angels. So Todd empty handed, but it shouldn't matter. Chris Weidinger out of angels, out of frag tusks, out of crystal brands. He can't do much here. Chris, so four and two. Christopher Weidinger, seeing if he has any faceless lootings left. I'm not sure what he's looking for at this point. No, he has nothing relevant left in his deck, but he's going to make sure. Well, if he has, uh, if he's all the, all the way down to the Gristle Brands in the deck, he could cast a Gristle Brand, and that would actually be good enough. The seven Life Link would, would stabilize him. <laughs> wow. And cast Lingering Soul. So, so he'll stall for a few turns here. And he'll flash it back, so he'll have... Did he miss making a token? Yeah, I think he's supposed to have five. Can you miss making the correct number of tokens? <laughs> I don't think they changed that rule. I, 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 don't, I don't think if I fail to put a token on the board, I don't get it. That's, I think the spell has to resolve correctly. He's going to unburial rights a Thrag Tusk. Yep, gains a little more life. It goes back up to nine. Up to nine, trying to dig to Gristle Brands. And yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier with him discarding that overthrown tomb. There we go. Tomb. There's the fifth spirit. When he gets back to those gristle brands, he, he won't have four black sources. He, he sort of carelessly discarded them while keeping a green-white source. Yep. Let's hope he has some black sources left in his deck. So he only has three black sources? Yeah. Still? A lot in his graveyard. Yeah. But none in play. Or only three in play, rather. So Todd has used one or two Snapcaster mages. I think one. So he does have another entreat coming. Yep. So first things first for Todd, he'll use the lighthouse, discard a land. Think. Think again. Remember, Todd with Todd's gonna have to plus this, Jason, unless he has a kill spell of some sort. No, well no, he can get yeah. Yeah, yeah, he will. He'll have to plus it. So Todd not actually not in the, out of the yet. woods yet. Yeah, I still think Back a few turns, I would would have liked to have seen Todd uh, lifelink his swinging team of angels. But team he swung, Tyranny swung for 20. Yeah, I think that was definitely the better play, rather than just putting a beast on top. The beast on top saved 3, 6, 9 life. Right. Lifelink the angels would gain 20. Right. Well, very complicated match here. Yeah, this is a slugfest. A 31 minute game one here. Just outstanding. Todd checking the graveyard, trying to figure out what threats Chris has left in his deck. Yeah, I mean, I'm almost, I'm almost at this point I want to count Chris's deck and right. see if you have more than five cards in it. Once we get down to five, we know what the deck is. <laughs> I can't actually believe he has too many more than five left in there. Mm. He's probably down below 20. Yeah, certainly below 20. The question is whether it's below 10 or not. And I, I just, I can't believe that he didn't make sure he had four black sources in play. Probably didn't think this would come up. I imagine hard casting Gristle Brand is, I would not be surprised to hear that that's not, not, uh, hasn't happened yet this turn. Right. And uh, Matt Beverly on Twitter, Todd Anderson is trying to do his best insane Hain impression. Definitely Lots true. Of with the miracles. Killing angels. All right, so Todd's debating here. Yeah, I think he's realizing he's going to have to plus the Jace. Yeah, he doesn't want to, but he has to. Yep, so three angels swing plus Jace is probably the line. Yep, yep. plus three angels. Yep, that's what he's doing. Force Chris Weidinger right. to block at least yeah. one of them. And if you hear you probably don't want to block more than one because of the possibility of Pillar of Flame. Right. But Chris is, is going to go to one. That's touchy. There, there are Pillar of Flames in Todd's deck. So now Chris drops to one. Pillar will be lethal. Yeah, there's are one or two Pillars left in Todd's deck. Hopefully we'll see here. One, two, two Pillars. So two left in Todd's deck. Yeah, he now realizes if he can draw to Pillars. Yeah, literally <laughs> leaving the red open. Yep, also one Snapcaster, too. Uh, we'll see if he can do it here. Uh, 
There it is. Oh wow, yeah. pillar of flame off the top. For and an unburial rights in Chris Whitinger's uh, hand. <laughs> like they knew it was there. Yeah. <laughs> so Con Anderson takes the marathon game one. Yeah, it was a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> So now we go to sideboarding. Um, welcome back. If you're just joining us now, you came to in a, a slugfest of a game. You saw Todd Anderson beat Chris Whitinger one to nothing. Star City Games Open Series Cincinnati. I'm Zach Hall. He's Matthias Hunt, and we're in the finals. Right. The standard open. So right now we have yeah, Todd Anderson up one game on Chris Whitinger. For those of you joining us. Um, we are going to give you our a trivia question. We do this after every round. This last one for being in the finals is 12 months, a full year of free Star City Premium. Yes. So remember, once again, tweet this answer to with hashtag Star City Premium, SCG Premium. You have to use that hashtag right there, or else you do not get entered into the drawing. You don't have to tweet out at SCG Live. You don't have to use the Cincinnati hashtag, but you can. Make sure you have SCG Premium. And so our trivia question for this one, we were talking about before the tournament even started, how many Lala trolls were going to be in the top eight. It was a big point of contention. Everyone was talking to me on Twitter. They said 12, 16, 20, someone said. But the question is... Did anyone give an answer that was not a multiple of four? Uh, no, no one no. did. No <laughs> okay. one did. Probably wisely so. If you're All playing right. Lala Troll, you want four. So, how many Lala Troll were in the top eight? That's our answer. And you know, if you don't know off the top of your head, you can go to StarCityGames.com, look at the written coverage, look at the top eight deck list, count them up. Tweet that answer in with SCG Premium. You'll be entered in to win one year. All right. We're going to bring you back to the match then. Yeah. Both players, one second, both players sideboarding. Yeah, both players studying each other's deck lists. Right. Now, you can probably hear in the background uh, the head judge for the Legacy Open Tournament making his opening announcements. Round one's about to start. Um, with the speed of the semifinals, you would have thought that these players would have been able to make round one, but right. not able. I believe they, if they, they, they get entered into the Legacy Open. They do. So. They get a round one by and entered into the, into the Legacy Open. Sure round one by, a little perk for making the finals. Right. <laughs> Outside of, you know, the prize, the prize, <laughs> yeah. the prize money for making the Outside finals. of the thousands of dollars and Star City Open points. Verify that your deck list reflect the contents of the deck you're playing today. Made right. so we talked a little bit about what the players will be boarding in. Christopher Whitinger, I really would like to see Bonfire the Dam from its burn spell it deals with angels. Um, outside of that, I, I hope we'll, I'll certainly see uh, the one ray of revelation come in. Yeah, the one Ray would have been huge that game, would have loved it in the main deck, but he'll definitely be bringing it out of the sideboard. Aside from that, he'll probably bring in the Vraska of the Unseen, just a really difficult card for Todd to deal with as it is a Planeswalker. He has the Detention Sphere, but Vraska will get off at least one minus three, so that'll be a good card for him. Duress will be huge, certainly bring that in. Oblivion Ring, probably as just a way to deal with the Planeswalkers. Faith Mender, no. Sever the Bloodline does deal with the Angel Tokens, so Chris Afterboard actually has a lot of profitable ways to interact with these Angel Tokens. He has Bonfires and he has Severs, so the Angel Tokens won't be the looming threat like they were in Game 1. And I'm guessing because of Chris's variety of answers, these next two games will be even, well, I, I'm hesitant to say even longer, but just as long as the first one. On the other side of it, Todd Anderson, three Geist of St. Traff, two Supreme Verdict, two Purify, Dissipates, Negates, Sundering Growths, Jace Memory Adept. Now, the card that jumps out at me right away is Jace Memory Adept for that zero ability, the mill 10, because as we saw that game, Chris Weidinger was down to below 10 cards in his deck, and milling him is actually a really real threat. It helps him out at first, but if, but if Chris can't deal with the Jace, the game's going to be over pretty soon. So that'll definitely come in. Dissipate, certainly come in. The best counter spell in Todd's deck. That and Syncopate. The Negate, probably come in. Purify the Grave, probably come in. And maybe even the Geist of St. Trap for some beatdowns. Todd has a lot of sideboarding to do, but thankfully for him, he has a lot of cards to side out as well. Four Pillar frame of Flames will be the first cut. Aside from that, though, he has some trimming to do. Not sure if he wants the full five Wrath of Gods in his deck, or Terminus, one Supreme Verdict. He'll probably cut at least the one Supreme Verdict. Terminus is good because it puts them on the bottom. I'm looking at the Azorius Charm, because lifelink, draw a card, put a creature on top. 
not really what Todd wants to be doing in this matchup. While it does seem strange to side out a utility card that costs so little mana, I think that these games will go long enough that he doesn't really need the Azorius charm. So I expect those nine to be sided out, at least some combination of them. Uh, so both players are probably doing some extensive sideboarding here. They both have a lot of good cards. Braska, Ray of Revelation. Duress, Oblivion Ring, Bonfire, Sever for Chris, Jace Memory at F, Negate, Dissipate, Purify the Grave, Geist of St. Trap for Todd. So, right. both players' deck's gonna look a lot different. I don't know if Geist of St. Trap comes in for, um, for Todd, you think so? That's the questionable one. Okay. Not, not really sure about that, because Chris Weidinger uh, doesn't actually have that many creatures to defend it with, and he might have to side out some of his cheaper threats, like Centaur, Healer, Lingering Souls. Yeah, Geist of St. Trap's an interesting in a deck like this, because it really is gonna have to deal 20. Like, anything short of 20 and it's a bad card. Right. Which, that makes me not sure about it. Right, especially since I think Todd boards out Pillar of Flames. I mean, the, the biggest thing to me is I'm not sure what matchup Skies are saying trapped is for. So at that point I have to ask Todd, you know, what is the game plan? Right. Well, if he wins one more game, you'll be able to ask him in our interview. Fair enough. He only has to win one. Chris Whitinger on the back foot, has to win two. Play fair, have fun, good luck. Players shuffling up. Pairings for round one are up in the Legacy Open. These players just trying to tune that out, concentrate on the match at hand. All right. So before these players will get to join, yep, join in at, in round two of the Legacy Open. Todd looking a little tired. They both players waking up very early for the top eight, yeah. along with our viewers waking up early for the top eight. <laughs> Thank you. Along with us waking up early for the right. top eight. <laughs> <laughs> After the draft we did last night, didn't get too much sleep. That's very true. All right, we have uh, both, both players joking around here a little bit. Um, so, post board, does Chris Whitinger's strategy change, do you think? He now has a lot more counter magic to play around and some graveyard hate. Well, I don't think it changes so much as it lets him. Uh, feel the pressure a little less because he has so many good ways to interact with those angel tokens. He doesn't have to absolutely put as much pressure as possible on Todd. On the other hand though, Todd has more counter spells. So even though Chris has more answers, Todd has more ways to deal with those answers. So it'll be a little cat and mouse game with how much Todd wants to tap out for his entreats, what counter spells he wants to leave up, what answers Chris has, etc. But of course this is all assuming that the players are sideboarding like we think they are. Too. Which, and as we've like, seen before, big assumption. Looks like Christopher Widinger dropping down to six cards here. Yeah, and you know, a few people on Twitter are saying that Geist is good in the mirror. Right. Definitely it, true. Well, kind of, except for, the, except for the fact that neither of them plays counter spells and all of them play a ton of sweepers. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm convinced. I mean, I understand that that's what, like, probably where it goes, is like in some sort of heavy removal deck, but the removal's not targeted. I'm not actually sure... Like, I understand that the design of it is for the mirror, but I'm not sure I agree with the function of hmm. it. Well, you have to figure that for the mirror, both players will be taking out some number of their sweepers, and it is a good planeswalker answer. So you're, so you're next leveling them. You're like, oh, if you're going to board your sweepers, then I'll board in this Geist. Right, the old control mirror switcheroo, like the Dark right. Confidant. Yeah. So here we go. Chris Widinger, six cards. Todd Anderson, seven cards. Chris will be on the play for game two. And it looks like he's keeping. All right. Temple Garden off Chris Whitinger. Todd with a land heavy hand. He has his but Supreme Verdict and Jason Edge probably makes an immediate keep. Yeah, for sure. I have a, have a question on Twitter here. How much time do they have to finish the game and match? And what happens if time runs out? Well, uh, the top eight is untimed. So you notice the clock is going up instead of down. Right. So they have as much time as they need to finish now. The real question is, what happens yeah. if they don't finish before round two of Legacy? That I don't know. There is a floor. Okay, so in that record, there is a floor judge watching the game and enforcing the speed of play. So that's not to say that you know players can do whatever they want, but, um, but. yeah, there's it is an untimed round. So unburial rights and angel of serenity and ray of revelation. Wow, wow. a lot of times the unfortunate truth of this that he, he, I believe he has to take the angel. Well, if it's anything like uh, Tracker's instincts, he has to take the angel. I'm pretty sure he does. I don't think he can bin all five of them. Yeah, wow, that's that's an interesting flip no, for no, Chris No, no, actually, it's a you may. It's oh, wow. you may. So you, he, can, he can mill himself for five here if he chooses to. Interesting. If he has another land, I imagine he will. 
Well, he's already down one card. I don't know if he wants to be down two cards. Yeah. Not... I want the angel in my hand, I think. Yep. I'm going to put the angel in hand. Yeah, he's agreeing with you. He's banking on this game going long. Maybe right. he has a faithless looting. He wants some fodder for it. Yeah, I mean, if you have a faithless looting, I think this play is easy. Even though he doesn't have a red source. But right. I think definitely the correct play. He's boarded and severed the bloodline. Yep, I... He that's definitely great, has. That's which is great against Intriguing Angels. Yeah, the one card I really, really don't like in his hand is the Golgari Charm. I don't really understand that one. Well, it regenerates it. It, it avoids the Divine Verdict, Supreme Verdict. But, th but that's really about it. I suppose we did have a lot of combats between Angels and his creatures, and he's kind of hoping that, that to avoid those. Hmm. The biggest thing he has to avoid, though, is Team Planeswalker that's about to be assembled here. Right. And, you know, I would, I would be way more worried about the Jace Memory Adept than the Jace Architect of Thought. Right. Because the memory oh. add-up just will threaten to mill him out very About to go quickly. Jason to Tamiyo. So Jace, Architect of Thought, doing a great job of keeping down Lingering Souls here. Have you seen some, uh, some suggestions of other spots in the sideboard? Uh, someone was talking about Niv-Mizzet, Draco Genius in the sideboard. Um, I think, yeah, one of the... One of the biggest pro one of the biggest things about that is you want to make sure that whatever you're trying to resolve is something with res with good resilience. Um, the Mizzet probably only has good resilience if you're casting it on ten mana, then you can immediately like double ping. Right. Um, I suppose the Golgari Charm does get rid of Detention Sphere, which yeah. is a decent point. So it, which is reasonable. He has Ray of Revelation in for that as well. So it might be that he just doesn't want cards like Centaur Healer. Right. Right. Now, if he had more rays in his sideboard, I would definitely take the Charm out, but. Since he only Just has one, ray. that makes sense. So, well, Team Planeswalker has been assembled over here by Todd. Um, Chris is going to have to break through this. I'm not sure that's how possible that is. Yeah, these super friends are really just going to uh, lock his team down. Yep, Tamio on a land, Jace on the creatures. Yep, and no Black Source for Chris Widinger. No flashback on the other Lingering Souls. No hard cast on burial rights for him. So he does have Faithless Looting here. Faithless Looting, think twice in response. Yep, Todd will probably dissipate it if he draws one. He does not, so Faithless Looting happens. Chris Widinger draws some more lands, so he does have seven for that angel. Question is, will it resolve? And his deck looking pretty anemic right now as he has seven drop, seven drop utility <laughs> spell, sever the bloodline versus two planeswalkers. Right. So let's see, I think he's going to go for the Gristle Brand that he just discarded. At least I wouldn't situation. Probably. Draw, draw seven. He has to get seven. something going here. Yep. He does, yep, and it's white on the flashback from Burial, right? So he has that option available to him. He wants to make it right now, and I think he's going to. And yep. On Burial, right? It's targeting Gristle Brand. And it's into play. There it is. 7-7, seven, seven, lifelink, flying, pay 7, draw 7. Yep. That might not even be able to race this ultimate, though, either of these ultimates. Well, the big ultimate that Todd really wants is that the one he has to be worried about is the Tamiyo ultimate. Right. The Tamiyo ultimate will win the game for Todd. So he does have support. So Todd will probably just tap down things, cast Supreme Verdict, let Christopher have 7 cards. Yeah, I think so. I think that uh, Todd yeah. is well on his Todd, way to winning this game. Both turns. Planeswalkers yeah. threatening the ultimate really soon two turns away in two turns if everything goes according to Todd's plan he'll have the Tamiyo emblem right and you know even if Chris Weidinger does something crazy here Todd will be able to ultimate that Jace Architect of Thought go search his deck for an angel for an angel for a gristle brand Todd's in right. a commanding position here so Weidinger's gonna draw seven interestingly enough uh, yeah he, he may ultimate Architect of Thought just so he can cast memory adapt yeah and Chris draws one of his bonfires, so he's so he did indeed side those in. Mm -hmm. As, oh, that, yeah, he's like, no, 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 that <laughs> one actually works. You're okay there, that one's good. You get to get that back. That taps the land, weak stones, passes the turn. Yep, still no black source for Chris, Chris Widinger. It'll stay tapped down. Oh, no, one, one black source for Chris Widinger. He draws on burial rights. Now, Chris Widinger did draw Dreadbore. Okay. So Dreadbore is going to probably happen on the Moon Sage. Dreadbore plus Unburial. It's via, he has only single black, so he can't actually make that play. Yep, yeah, he has to Dreadbore. That's first priority here before Todd draws a counterspell. Now, if Chris Widinger kills the Jace, 
he's going to be uh, pretty unhappy to learn that two more Jaces wait in Todd's hand. Oh, and it's got to be killing the Tamiyo. The Jace isn't going to win like the Tamiyo is. Right. Oh, he's, oh, he's going at the Jace. Okay. If I'm Todd, that, that's fine. Not only will Todd has another memory adept or tra architect of thought in his hand. Yeah, he has both options, architect and memory adept. The real problem is that Todd is going to get a Tamiyo emblem, most likely. Right, and you know, Chris is really just handcuffed by his black mana here. He, he has a duress in hand, he has an unbearable reds in hand, he has lingering souls in the graveyard, but he can only cast one of them per turn, even sever the bloodline. Oh yeah, he can't even he use that. Discard. He can't even use that mana, his discard step. And I think Chris has to discard a few more. Todd's speeding up a little too much here. Another land, so we're going to see, I think, Memory Adept come down now. Angel problem of which Jace? <laughs> hey, you know, if you're Todd, that's a pretty good problem to have. Right. Neat enough, after Tamiya makes an emblem, Jace can draw 10. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> In case Todd's wanting to find a counter spell, I, I, that's actually probably the correct play. <laughs> I, th I think if I'm Todd, I just slam Jace and start milling. All right, well, you mill Chris, and then I think the next turn you mill yourself to draw 10, so that you draw into to, to syncopate, and then you continue and then you continue milling Chris. Wow, I, I might I might have an article for you to read. It's called The Danger of Cool Plays by cool Chad play. Ellis. No, 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 it's not, because he doesn't have a counter spell in his hand. I think it's, it, that, that to me seems like, I mean, the, 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 right. the, real question, that article. the real question is, can Todd even lose the Tamiya? Like, <laughs> you know, if he flips coins to decide what card he plays, can he lose? Which right. is probably not. Probably not. Infinite Terminuses, infinite right. Jace. Uh, it's, a Tamiya ultimate is seldom beatable. Right. I think I've heard of one in my life. And duress. Uh, oh, and we're packed with lots of spells. <laughs> and it looks like... And if you're Chris Weidinger, uh, this sinking feeling is probably taking over right now. He has to bonfire just to keep Tamiyo off ultimate here. So give him a few more draws to find his other Dreadbore. Right. Memory of Jace. Jace, Snapcaster, other Jace. Still left in his hand. And Chris, we and Chris Weidinger... Dreadbore Vraska the Unseen left in his deck that directly deal with Planeswalkers. And here he goes. This looks like, I, I, think, it, I think it has to be a bonfire. And yep, bonfire of the damned. It's only way to stop. Yep, it's just, just a burn, get a lava spike at, a lava spike at Tamiyo. Yep. Tamiyo a few turns away from ultimate now. Todd's still with a lot of control over the game. Tamiyo ticks Tamiyo up. Start, start it again. Not Ooh. sure what Chris is pointing at. Might, we're might just be confirming. Just a slight question. Yeah. And Todd's gonna draw and mill. He's Todd's drawing and milling himself with the Jace Memory Adept. Yeah, you know, I would have probably used the zero ability over and over, but using his plus one is fine too because he can eventually just use the zero, then use the minus seven too. Right. I mean, the minus seven, any number of players draw 20 cards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty big deal. Todd Anderson can just draw 20, get some counter spells, untap, mill 10. And Chris Weidinger is going to cast Unburial Rights. This one targeting, I believe, Crystal Brand. Todd should be fine with this, you know. The problem is that these planeswalkers trump what the fright strategy does. Right, just direct trump. Tamio taps the big creature down. He can let him, he Chris can draw as many cards as he wants. Yeah, know, in fact, Todd card. wants him to. Sure. He's still limited by his mana base and the fact that his deck plays like a Type Four deck. <laughs> yep, frights is the definition of a one-trick pony. That's for sure. So both Planeswalkers on seven now. Jace Memory Adept threatening his ultimate. Tamiyo threatening ultimate in one more turn. And Todd Anderson just with a stacked hand right now. No counters yet. Still hasn't managed to find any of those, but he has a Snapcaster. He has a Detention Sphere. He has a bunch of Planeswalkers about to ultimate again. Right. So the game's not quite locked up. 
He's one counter spell away from that. Chris Weidinger's window is quickly closing. He needs a top decked bonfire very soon. Draws Thrag Tusk, draws Duress. Neither one will help him right now. Starts Christy Salvage and Rolling Templar. Rolling Templar is still in the deck. That's very surprising. I was not expecting to see that. Yep, that kills exactly two Snapcaster Mage. Maybe he kept right. in as a hedge against Geist of St. Traft, figuring that's he could fair. always discard it to Faithless Looting. Yeah. Actually, that, that's, that's a fine strategy. Yeah. In a deck like Frights, it's not really a huge deal to have a dead card, because again, you can just discard it. You can mill it. You can mulch it. He's in Duress here. We'll use that uh, precious black mana for Duress. Right. I'm taking detention sphere, but still, he is seemingly without a way to stop these ultimates from happening, which are in conjunction going to get him. Yeah, I'm not sure what Chris's plan is here. If I was him, I would start counting my deck. So the raid. Todd has the ability to mill 10. Yep, he's drawing seven again. This time he's drawing to a Dreadbore. His second one, that's what he's looking for, but he's already spent his black mana. Yeah, that, that pre-combat duress, was, or pre-draw duress was really... Think, even so, I think he wanted to clear the way for a counter spell just in case. No, 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 he does have Dreadbore okay, mana. He does okay. have a second black, no mistake, so he, he can Dreadbore. And the question is which to go at. He's going to go with the Tamiyo. That's probably, which, which that'll happen, so Tamiyo's not going to get an emblem. Biggest issue for him is that memory adept... Yeah, I mean, if Chris so has well. 30 or less cards in his deck, he just loses to that Jace Memory Adept. Yes. Oh, and he draws the negate, negate off the thing anyway, twice. For the rub-ins, for the lock-it-up. And that should be about it. Yeah, for sure. Cameo will keep Gristlebrand tapped down. Jace, oh, well, it doesn't really matter what Jace does. Todd can forget to use the Jace. He'll still win. Yeah, he's winning on two fronts right now. And an end step on Burial Rite, another main phase on Burial Rites, Angel of Serenity. Can it get anything out of the graveyard? Not sure. Todd's going to respond. He'll probably try to draw into another negate with his other Think Twice. Right. No reason not to here. Well, Todd can always snap cast a Terminus. Right. No, or he can snap cast negate. Yeah, and Todd is telling Chris he's dead. Because of the Jace Mill 20, Jace Mill 10. Game over. Todd Anderson is your champion. Star City Games Open Series Worcester. Wow, congratulations to Todd. Still yeah. on a run, winning the Invitational and picking it up the next season with a win in the very first event after it.